Let's get into the details of the human respiratory tract now. The oxygen from the air is taken in from the nasal cavity or the oral cavity or both. Is it better to breathe through the nose? The answer is a definite yes. And the obvious question is why? Unlike the mouth, the nose filters, wets and warms the air that passes through it. The nose hair is responsible for filtering the air that passes through the nasal cavity. The dust particles and germs are trapped by the hair in the nostrils and the air is warmed by the blood circulating in the nose. And it's made wet by the mucus present in the nostrils. So remember, it's always better to breathe through the nose and not the mouth. Once the oxygen is taken in from these two points, it reaches the pharynx. The air or the oxygen we breathe in through the nose and the mouth reaches the pharynx which lies behind these cavities. The pharynx, if you remember, splits into the esophagus and the larynx. The esophagus is where the food goes in and the larynx is where the air goes in. The food from the esophagus goes to the stomach and further into the small intestine where the digestion happens. But to understand the respiratory tract, this part is what we are interested in. The larynx and the parts that follow it. The larynx is also the body's voice box as it contains the vocal folds that produce the sounds of speech and allows us to modulate our voice. The larynx also has the thyroid cartilage that protrudes out and is sometimes referred to as the Adam's apple. Everybody has it but it's more prominent in males. So the nasal cavity, the pharynx and the larynx form the upper respiratory tract. And what about the lower respiratory tract? Following the larynx, we have the trachea commonly referred to as the windpipe. It has these C-shaped rings of cartilage embedded into it. They are around 16 to 18 of them and if you raise your chin up, you can even feel them with your fingers. Now we come to the interesting part. The trachea splits into two at this point. These are the entry points to the lungs and they are called the bronchi and each of them is a bronchus. The air from the oral and nasal cavity enters the windpipe and reaches the lungs through the bronchi. Yes, these are the two lungs in the human body, the left lung and the right lung. They are labelled based on the perspective of the human body that owns the lungs. For the human body that owns the lungs, this is the left one and this is the right one. There's a lot more we need to know about the lungs, but we'll make a separate video for that one. So how does the air get into the lungs? These bronchi, as you can see, split further into tiny bronchioles. The trachea splits into two bronchi and each of the bronchi split further into tiny bronchioles. This structure, by the way, is also called the bronchial tree. Think of it as a tree with branches that's flipped upside down. The trachea is like the trunk of the tree and then it starts branching out into the bronchioles. But the real deal is what happens at the end of the bronchioles. If we zoom into this region, we see these tiny bunch of air sacs called the alveoli. Yes, they look like a bunch of grapes and are called the alveoli. This is where magic happens. Very close to the alveoli lie the blood capillaries through which the blood flows. So the oxygen from the alveoli is sent to the blood, which then travels to the heart which then circulates it to the entire body. At the same time, the carbon dioxide, which is the waste byproduct, is transferred from the blood to the alveoli. This is where exchange of gases takes place. The oxygen is sent to the blood and the carbon dioxide from the blood is sent to the alveoli. The carbon dioxide then travels through the bronchioles to the bronchi, from the trachea and back out from the oral or nasal cavity. So that's how oxygen from the atmosphere is inhaled, gets to the alveoli, then into the blood and then carbon dioxide is exhaled.